In today's video, I want to talk about my Chinese diesel heater. I've done a lot of changes and hopefully I've got it dialed in now. The many pieces can be intimidating, but actually it's really not that bad. This is directly behind the front passenger seat. The floor is a little bit uneven here, but I removed the covering of the floor. I ground it down a bit and then I put some Permatex high, high temperature silicone on there and put some saran wrap on it. And then I used the mounting plate to make it nice and flat. And then I did another layer to make sure I had it all built up nice and level. And then I put a final coat of sealer and glued it down. I used these wide pieces of metal to get a good flat surface to bolt that thing down to the floor. I put the fuel tank in the back cabinet. And then I ran the fuel line from the back cabinet to underneath the kitchen. I had to drill a hole through the floor to bring the gas line through. And then I put a piece of heat shrink tubing on the gas line to protect it from the rough edges of the metal because I had to go through multiple layers. I used some leftover high temperature Permatex to seal that off. The plug for the pump had a big plug on the end and rather than drill a big hole in the floor, I just cut the wire and ran a drug drilled a very small hole and soldered it back together and sealed that hole as well. Here's the pump, the filter, the intake and exhaust all installed. The exhaust here is off to the outside of the van, which is where it's supposed to be installed, but I immediately smelled fumes. So I redirected it to underneath the van. And yes, there's a carbon monoxide detector inside the sleeping area. I took off the plastic door threshold and ran the thermostat wire with the wire harness of the car and then covered it all back up again. Turns out the thermostat stuck out too far so I had to trim the bed platform by a little bit. I ran the heater duct underneath the kitchen and came out into the bedroom. I ended up having to put a metal heat shield whenever I used the heater. I mounted the fuel tank on a hinge so that I can swing out to refill it and soon after I discovered it was leaking and it was leaking through the cap and then so I added a breather hose, sealed the top with a little bit of tape, and I even gave it a sock. I even tried a rubber cap that I could clamp down to seal it, but it still leaked. Not enough fuel to see, but I could smell it. I even took the tank out and sprayed it with a clear sealer to see if I could stop the smell, but to no avail. Finally, I bought a proper fuel tank from Risk Racing. I could crank down the cap as tight as I wanted and it was really nice thick plastic. I also invested in the proper Webesto gas line and discovered that that cheap green fuel line actually let odor come through it. It stank. I debated whether to put the fuel line into the bottom or the top of the tank and I ended up doing it on the top of the tank to reduce the chance of leakage. So then it's running the fuel line. The nice thing about it was when I had to go through the bottom of the car I could fit this right through the green stuff so I didn't even have to worry about fitting through that hole in the floor. So I cut a mud flap from a truck to protect all of that from brush underneath the car. The breather that came on the tank was unfortunately on the wrong side so I put another one in. But this one seemed a little bit small and was stressed so I replaced that. After trying a larger washer and gasket, I bought a proper fuel dip thing and cut it short so that it would only breathe air. Then I had to install it. And here we have the notorious pump ticking shortened up dramatically from a startup. So I bought a CO monitor to see about trying to dial in the settings on my controller. A part of the testing, I used a meat thermometer to check the temperature coming out of the heater. And the heat coming out of the exhaust was too much for the CO monitor. I had to drill that out again to make it work. And here are some of the numbers from the testing. For cold weather, I've been putting in about 20% kerosene to the diesel and it clearly has made the exhaust much cleaner. This is the controller to set the clock. You do that and you, you hit the top left and then these buttons will change time on the clock. Next is, this is for setting a timer. You turn that on. And then this is to get into the settings. And the way you get in there, one, six, eight, eight. And there's my low pulse. There is my high pulse. There is my low fan speed. There is my high fan speed. There's a setting you can go 12 or 24 volts. And this is, I forget what this one is. This is the power of the glow plug. When you start it up, you can change that to be hotter or colder. And this is the timer being on or off. There's setting a, a timer, turn it on. And there's your indicator for a timer. 
Turn that off. It's off. Changing the settings for the controller is a whole nother video that's kind of involved. Um, it's important for when you go into elevation to be able to know what you're doing to change it. So this is the medium sized muffler upgrade. I had to reverse the case on it to have the drain hole at the bottom and this is what I found inside. <laughs> So this is the muffler mounted and these are air filter, fuel filter and the air breather that I used for the tank. Muffler and air filter mounted. The fuel filter uh, with a drain plug mounted. I try to bring spare parts with me. These are screens for the glow plug. I have a spare set of gaskets and an extra controller. And I also carry an extra glow plug. I also carry with me an extra fuel pump. As always, thanks for watching my videos. And if you have questions, be sure to ask. I'll do my best.